All right, uh, I will continue with the butterfly spread because I did not go into detail and miss an important piece of the explanation so that you can understand. Guys, pay attention because this gets very difficult and tricky. So, I'm repeating again what is a butterfly spread. A butterfly spread is a bull spread and a bear spread. Now, a bull spread will be, and take a look, I made a picture for you so that you can understand the picture. A bull spread, by definition, means you're going to have long call with a lower strike and short call with a higher strike. This is the definition, right? You long the bull spread. So, this is a long call spread. So, look at the picture over here. Pay attention to the picture. You create the bull spread by going long call at 110 and going short call at 120. That's the, this piece here is the bull spread. That's the bull. And you're also going a call bear spread. So the butterfly is a bull and is a bear spread. The bear spread has got by definition a long for the higher strike and a short for the lower strike. And now to make it easy, you make here, instead of using four strikes, to make things very easy, you make three strikes, okay? So, you construct the bear spread by going short, let's say 120, and going long 130. So, here is what happens. What happens is that you are, guys pay attention, this is tricky, you are two short calls in the middle range, and one long far out in the money, and one far in the money, okay? And here's the trick, here's the trick. If the stock price is nearby over here, this guy, because it's far away, remember time value of money, well, sorry, time value of the option, this has low time value. Remember, time value is highest near near the strike price, okay? So, if we're here 120 and we're near the strike price, this has got a very low time value. And this is away, so this is out of the money, this is well in the money, this also has low time value. So these two will have low time value. And this will have high time value. So, when you construct a butterfly spread, you're too short the midpoint and long far out of the money and far in the money. Okay, so you are collecting more time value, okay? You get all of this money, so these will cost, I'm just picking some numbers for your illustration, these will cost, let's say, 15, okay? This is gonna cost, I don't know, 20, uh oh, this is gonna be, sorry. This is gonna cost maybe, uh, let's see, these are going to be 15, this is going to be 22, and this is going to be 7. Okay, I'm just making up the numbers. So, you are collecting on these two 15, okay? 30. For two calls, you're going to be collecting 30. And for these, you're going to be paying 7 and 22 
29. So when you initiate the butterfly, you're going to be pocketing in money. So if, if the stock remains around zero, if the stock remains around zero, you will basically you will basically pocket this time value. The time value you will collect this 30. Okay? You will collect <coughs> this 30. And that's pretty much it. You will collect this 30. So if you are staying nearby the midpoint, if you're staying nearby the midpoint, over time you will be collecting more and more and more time value. So in a butterfly, when you're long butterfly, time works for you. Okay? Time works for you. You gain more on these short calls than you're losing on the long calls. Okay? So that's the whole idea. And, and, and probably and probably the whole idea is that this is not going to cost seven. This is most likely going to cost only three. Okay? This possibility is going to cost very little over here. Okay? This is going to cost over here. And this may be actually only whatever. So the whole idea is that the middle one is going to cost way more than the two on the outside. Okay? And that's how you gain with the butterfly. You gain with the butterfly that if it stays right around here, actually if it expires nearby, the long and the short calls will cancel each other. The long and the short calls will cancel each other. And all you're left is with the time value of money. Okay? That's the basic idea. The basic idea is you work on the time value of money. But if it goes far, far away, for example, if it goes very far away, very high here, let's say it expires over here. Suppose it expires, it expires, let's say, at 150. What happens now if it expires 150? On this long call, you gain 20, right? On this call, you gain 20. On this short call, you lose 30, and you lose 30, okay? You see, you see, see how it happens? And over here on the long call, what happens here? You gain 60. So the tricky part is that when you're far away or far in, they begin to cancel each other out. All your longs and all your shorts begin to cancel each other. So you're not gaining much, you're not losing much. That's the whole idea. They cancel each other out. Okay, the longs and the shorts. Because you, you got two longs, you've got two shorts. When you go far out on the one end, the longs and the shorts cancel out. If you go on the other one, everything expires worthless. Okay? Everything expires worthless. All right. So that, that's the whole idea. That's the way to understand this whole thing. The key piece is that you are two shorts which have very high time value and time works for you in your favor. Okay? And that's pretty much it. Okay, now these two longs, okay, well, I don't want to get into that. All right, let's do the next, next thing. Calendar spread. Calendar spread. That's, next one is 7, 3. I already defined what is a 
calendar in a calendar spread it's going to be the bullish one you're going to be long the long call so you're going to be call with x2 times well, oh, x times t2 this is the long call july and you're going to be short x t1 so this is going to be july so we're going to buy the july call and you're going to be short the June call. So that's going to be the bullish one, okay? The bearish one is the opposite. The bearish calendar call spread is going to be C, X, T1, that's the long, and the short is C, X, T2. I'm repeating. For the bullish one, you go long the July, short the June. Here, you go long the June and short the July. Okay? So, that's pretty much it. That's the definition. Now, question is what happens well the strike is exactly the same so all you got is a difference in time value a difference in time value and we have a very very important chart the time value DK time value DK Do you guys remember how we draw the picture of time value DK We drew the picture like this Early on, there is a little decay, <coughs> so this is time. You got, let's say, 10 weeks, from 10 weeks to 9 weeks, you lose a little bit of value. Okay? Then from 9 weeks to 10 weeks to 8 weeks, you lose a little bit more value, okay? And over time, for the last week, you lose a lot of value. So, the closer you get to expiration, the faster you lose time value. So, uh, we say that DK accelerates accelerates DK accelerates this means the following you got let's say two options provide an example now you got two options one is a three month it was is a six month okay and the three month will be worth ten dollars this is going to be worth 18 okay so what's going to be happening is 
If a month passes by, 10 is going to fall down to 6. Okay, it's going to fall. Okay, let's, let's make it 7. It's going to fall to 7. And 18 is going to fall down to how much? About? About? Rough number? Round number? Number? 14. No. That's what I was explaining so far. If this in one month is going to fall three, this is going to fall only two. So this is going to fall down to 16. Okay, you see what's going on? And then this one from seven falls down to four. Okay. And this again from 16 is going to fall down only maybe to 14. Okay. And then down the road, if this from 4 falls down to 0, this from 14 is going to fall down to 11. Okay? So, for one month, this loses 3, this loses 2. That's the way I designed it for you. I mean, I can use more. This loses 3, again, this loses 2. Well, this loses 4, this loses Three. So, the shorter the option, the faster it loses. So, it gets closer and closer to expiration. Decay means loss of value. Decay. The loss of value rises. Okay. So, it loses value faster. Okay. So, you got these two, okay? So see what happens now. Suppose you go long this one and you go short this one. For one month, for one month, when you initiate, you start with a net of eight, okay? So you pay eight, okay? Here it's the difference now is what? Nine, is it? So, you're paying eight, but now your value is moving to nine, okay? And here, your value is moving up to 10. So, it turns out that because the shorter loses more value over time, you're actually gaining time value. You're actually gaining time value. And you're gaining time value as long as you are nearby the strike. Okay, so if you're close to the strike, you're losing value more and you're gaining. So let's try to do now the picture to see what the picture looks like. Keeping in mind that you're gaining over time. Let's see what we got. And you also want to stay okay. So if you're far, far away out of the money, if you're far away out of the money, you're going to lose a lot of time value on both, okay? And your loss is going to be difference in purchase price. So if you're very far away, if you're very far away, you're going to lose the time value on the one, you're going to lose the time value on the, one, the, the other, and you're going to lose a lot of this. You're going to lose practically the difference between these two. So far out of the money, the price between the one and the other is like this. If you're far in the money, you're going to lose the time value again. So if you're in deep in the money or deep out of the money, you lose the time value, you're left with a loss 
of the difference in the purchase price. But here is, if you're right around the strike price, you're going to be gaining a lot. So you're going to be gaining more and more as you get to the strike price. And then you're going to be moving away. Now, this here is a loss. And this here is a loss. So the break even is somewhere over here. The break here is somewhere over here. This is picture seven, nine, and it's called call calendar spread. So, if you end up with the strike price, this means that you don't gain, remember, you got the same strike price for both. So, both of them are in the same, get the same intrinsic value. The only difference is the difference in time value. The strike for the one and strike for the other is exactly the same. So, the time value difference between the two is highest when you're at the strike. As you move away from the strike, the expensive call loses value faster. So, turns out that if you're nearby the strike, you gain. So here, this is gain. If you're far away from the strike, you lose, and you lose. OK? So you lose when you have little volatility. So the call, so this particular call calendar spread is a low volatility strategy. Low volatility strategy. Well, the other one that we just did a while ago was also a low volatility strategy. Well, what's the difference between the one and the other? Well, the difference is that time value decays in a smooth manner, okay? In the other one, the picture is more like this. I'll draw it with a red. It's a straight line over here, okay? And it's a straight line over here. And then it goes up like this, and down like this. So here is more of a smooth curve, and this one is sharp curve. And both of them are volatility. So these are the call calendar spread, we say is very, similar to the butterfly spread. Very, very similar to the butterfly spread. So, if it's gaining value over time, the question is, how is the spread gaining value over time? And here's the key. This assumes that the stock remains near the exercise price, okay? So, early on, it's going to be gaining very little, and over time, it's going to be gaining more. So, you're going to be gaining more the time value until you reach the maximum. The maximum you can get is the difference between the two call prices, okay? That's the difference between the, that's the best 
you can possibly get. Okay? So, it represents a limited loss. So it's a very low risk strategy. Okay? And it's a limited gain. So it's a low risk, low return strategy, betting that, betting that the volatility will be low. All right, let's see what else. Now, the limited loss comes from the fact that you're short a call. Okay? So, here, you got, let me see, I'm trying to see. You got one long call and one short call. The limited loss is represented by the shorting the call. Shorting the call lowers your overall cost and lowers your overall profit. Okay? But the limited gain also comes from the short call. Short call prevents you from making a lot of extra money. Okay? So the short call offsets your potential gain but also reduces your overall risk. Let's see anything else. The key to understand this whole story is that decay accelerates. As you get closer and closer to expiration, the option loses value faster and faster. Okay? So the short option is going to lose a lot of value. So what they can do, what they can do is the following. Let me just give you an example. You're going to say, you're going to buy one very long, you buy a six month strategy, sorry, six month call, you go long, and one month you go short. So, you buy a six month option and short the one month option. This is going to lose very, very fast, no matter what, okay? So, after one month, you're going to have a five-month option. And this same option now has become five-month option. After one month, you're going to sell one-month option short again. Okay? So you got a six-month, you short one month, this one expires, and when it expires, you short again one month. And after this one expires, you're still going to have a four month, you're still going to have a four month, you're still going to short one month. So you keep one long option, okay, longer term option, and you keep shorting one month, one month, one month, okay? So that's a simple strategy to maintain, to maintain the calendar spread, okay? And these are going to be losing value fast, okay? These are going to be losing value very fast. All right, is it clear? All right, next section. Four, ratio spread. So, let's see now what's the ratio spread. In a ratio spread, it's still a spread. 
a long one call. In short, another call. Okay, and let's try to do this. Uh, let's say S0 is now 100. Okay, and I got a call with a strike of X1, 110, and strike of X2, 120. If it's 110, the delta is going to be point. Four. I'm just making up the number, but it's going to be about 0.4. And this is far out of the money. The delta could be 0.2. Okay. So what's a ratio spread? A ratio spread will have one call going long here, one call going long, and this one you're going to go short too. So, you're going to get delta 1, delta 2, delta 1 over delta 2 is going to give you a ratio of 2, okay? So, I'm not now providing a simple example. From 100 goes to, I'm just making a number, 102, okay? So, suppose the stock moves 102, okay? What's the first call going to gain about, approximately? How much is going to be the gain on the first call? The first call is long, okay? This is What's going to be the gain? Well, the delta is 0.4, so when you go to 111, you're going to go by 0.4. If you go to 112, you're going to gain, on the first one, you're going to gain 0.8. So, the call, call x1 is going to be plus 0.8, so it's going to go up by 0.8. It's gonna, this one goes by 2 units times <coughs> 0.4. Okay. Well, what about this one? What about the second call? Call for x2 is going to be two calls. Okay, you got now two calls with a delta of 0.2 and the two calls are minus. You're short the two calls by 0.2 and with a change of two dollars. <coughs> is minus 0.8. Okay? Do you see this part? So, basically this is going to go up 0.8 and this is going to go down 0.8. So, the spread is going to remain unchanged. So, the ratio spread retains value. So, we construct a ratio spread. The ratio, ratio being the ratio of two deltas in order to remain, retain the value. And now comes the hard question. Why would you want to design or construct a spread of two calls, which, no matter how the stock moves up, will retain its value? Why would you ever want to do that?
And the short answer is you use the ratio spread when you have mispricing. If you have an option which is overvalued, you will take and short the overvalued. You're gonna sell short the overvalued option and take another option which is properly priced. Okay? Alternatively, if you have an option which is undervalued, you're gonna go long the undervalued option. So you use a ratio spread to hedge buying a mispriced, meaning buying undervalued option or selling an overvalued option. That's the whole idea. There is no point to construct a ratio spread unless one of the options is mispriced. Okay? And that's the whole idea. That's the way you can construct a risk-free portfolio that you know that will work in your favor. In other words, you can get a risk-free profit. In other words, you can pocket the mispricing of the option. So, ratio spreads are used to extract the value out of a mispriced option. Okay. Next one. Seven five. Now we get into combinations. So the chapter completes with combinations. And combination uses both calls and puts. So far we used call with a call, call with a stock, okay? Now we're gonna be using calls and puts at the same time. So the first type of a combination is called a straddle. So what is the straddle? Is a long call and a long foot. The call's got X T and the put's got X T. So, we say definition, a straddle is a position of a long call and a long put with the same expiration and the same strike. So the call and the put have the same strike and the same expiration, that's important. So, the long call is gonna give you an upside profit on the way up and the put's going to give you an upside profit on the way down so let's draw the picture at some point the call far out is going to give us some profit out there and the profit is going to be unlimited profit. If the stock falls very, very, very low, the put is going to give you a big profit and the lower it falls, the bigger the profit. So here is the put. So this is the call. We call this the call 
leg, the leg of the car. And this is the leg of the foot. And now the question is, well, what happens in between them? Well, in between them, wherever there is a strike, the worst case that can happen is it expires at the strike. When it expires at the strike, you lose everything on the call and everything on the put. So the maximum you can lose is at the strike. Okay, so this is your loss. And the loss here is the value of the call plus the value of the put. The worst you can do is lose them both. You long the call, long the put, you can't lose more than that. And here's the trick. If you're a little bit above, you're going to be gaining some on the call. And if you're a little bit below, you're going to be gaining some on the put. So, over here, this is going to be a loss. And this here is going to be a gain. And this here is a gain. So, a straddle, we say, is a long volatility strategy. Long volatility strategy which essentially means that if it suddenly jumps much higher or much lower, you're going to make money. And if it stays about the same, you're going to be basically losing money by losing time value of the call in the book. So this is a long volatility strategy. Remember, the long call means it's a bullish strategy. And the other one is a bearish, bearish strategy. So you're betting on a bullish and a bearish strategy. They don't cancel each other out, OK? You're just making a bet that if it's a bullish move, it's going to be a big move. Or if it's a bearish move, it's going to be a big move. If it's a small, you're going to lose on both, OK? So it's a long volatility strategy. Now, let's see if we got anything about time. Well, let's take a look at how the time works. <clears throat> so, if you're close, time's going to be like this. You're going to get very close over here to expiration. Okay? Then, if you got a little bit more time, it's going to be. like this, and if you got a lot of time, it's going to be close here, and then go down. So, as time goes by, and again, you remain near the strike price, you are losing time value on the call, and you're losing time value on the put. So, if you remain close to the strike, this means that you didn't get it right. It's not that the strategy is a bad strategy. You weren't right. You bet wrong. Okay? So that's the time value. Okay? And the last one. Of course, this is behind the straddle. If you want to bet the opposite, you can sell the straddle. And by selling, selling the straddle, it's going to be the opposite. You're going to have like this and like this. So selling the straddle will profit if volatility is low and will lose if the volatility is high. It's simply the mirror image. You just take the mirror image for selling the straddle. Everything is the exact mirror opposite. 
around this break-even point. Okay? Let's see, last one, last one. It's a lot more difficult and a lot trickier. Let's see what I can do in the last 10 minutes. And let's see what it is. Seven. Six. Call it box spread. So what is a box spread? Bull call money spread. Bull call money spread. And number two. Bear. Bear. Put money. Spread. Well, now I need to draw the picture. Let's see what the picture looks like. So, now I would think you're going to have four strikes, right? Do they use three or four strikes? We're here. So, you have X4, X3. You're going to be long call, and this is going to be short call. So long call and a short call. will give you a bull call money spread. Bull spread. Now, what about bear put money spread? So, you're going to have a X2, X1, and this is going to be a put. So, you got to put here. And I gotta put here. And if it's a bear spread, this means when you go down, you're gonna profit. So this is gonna be long put. And this is gonna be a short. Bear put money spread. So long put, short put. So, if you're going down, the long put's going to be gaining more than the short put. And over here, if you're going up, the long call's going to be gaining more than the short call. So, you're going to be gaining over here. If you're going up, you're going to be going down. So, this is the bear spread. Okay, now let's see what happens <clears throat> with this whole thing. Well, turns out 
that the bull spread and the bear spread turns out to be one gaining on the one side but losing on the other side and the other way around is that the long call and the long put, the short call, the short put cancel each other so it turns out to be risk free okay it's actually very easy to calculate. I'm not going to go through that. I mean, you can go through well if it goes down, the one gains, the one loses, and all the other things. Uh, you design it so as to cancel each other out. And let's see what happens now. The, the last piece. And the last piece, if it's risk free. Why bother? Why use it? What's the point? Why you want to design a risk-free portfolio? Guys, it's the same thing as the ratio spread. In a ratio spread, you also design a risk-free portfolio. Same thing. This price. mispricing okay so a good question for you for the midterm will be construct a very simple box spread okay a very simple one like 110 120 130 140 and show that no matter where the stock ends, the portfolio has the same outcome. So whether it ends at 50 or 150, it still has the same one, the same value. Just simply show with a simple example. You make up the example and you show it, okay? All right, that, that's pretty much it. But let's see if I'm missing something else. It gives you the MPV, everything's fine. The profit or the value of this, you can just copy it from the book. The profit is always equal to X2 minus X1. X2 minus X1 minus C1 minus C2. Oh, minus x2 minus x1 minus c1 plus c2 and then you have minus p2 plus p1 minus p2 plus p1 and that's pretty much it so what does this whole thing represent it represents two, the box spread. The meaning of a box spread is to put call parities. So you simply design two put call parities. And that's it. Alright guys, that's pretty much it, that chapter finished.